I think at Purdue, uh, that really gave me my first opportunity to jump in water over my head. And it was in uh, you know, a leadership role in my fraternity. And the Sigma Chi fraternity was based on a strong set of values. That, those strong set of values, um, all four companies that I've run, it's almost the same and it's the basics in terms of integrity and respect and courage and high ambition. You know, the other big takeaway is just, you know, simple things like the power of one-on-one. -on -one. Also, uh, not being afraid to directly confront somebody on a tough issue. And you know, you think at a young age, well, they're not going to like me if I do that. The uh, what's counterintuitive at that age is they actually like you more. General Motors came on campus the sophomore year, and they picked uh, one guy and one gal, engineering student, and, and they gave us uh, GM scholarships. So that paid for our tuition, books, living stipend, everything, and they gave us great jobs in Detroit in General Motors. And, I told General Motors, I think I want to go off to Harvard Business School. And they said, well, if you get in, we'll give you a General Motors fellowship. Between summers there, I worked in New York for Rick Wagner, you know, the, on our advisory board, CEO, and, who was for 10 years CEO and chairman of General Motors. So I learned a lot. And uh, so I, I got General Motors in my blood. And, you know, back then, it was the most powerful company in the world, 1.5 million em employees. It was an amazing uh, institution. I think it still is now. My last uh, five years there, I was running uh, GMF Robotics, which was a joint venture between General Motors and Fanuc. But I kind of this was kind of an entrepreneurial thing. Robots were on the cutting edge. We sell a lot of robots out in Silicon Valley, the disk drive business. And I remember coming out of Silicon Valley, and I'm going, "Wow, this is amazing!" So when it was at that inflection point, which was exactly my 30th birthday, I said, "You know, I'd really like to see what it's like." starting something uh, out on my own and, and seeing what it would be like if everybody was kind of an owner um, in the company and, and, uh, and all that. And uh, so I left. I, I got smacked in the face with a two by four. First thing I did, I was the number two person at a company called Chrono Software with a Q. And uh, IBM had invested like $30 million in us back then and all kinds of stuff. And so the CEO, the first day I was on board, said, oh, we have a board meeting tomorrow, I want you to say this, this, and this. And I go, well, Maria, that would be lying. I'm not gonna do that. And you know, that's when you go, oh man, I think I made the biggest mistake of my life. That was a great learning lesson. I probably learned more in that year than any other uh, year in my professional career. And what I end up doing, I end up meeting uh, a bunch of PhD scientists from the IBM research labs that had this great idea in terms of design uh, optimization software, computer-aided engineering for mechanical engineers. And they said, well, why don't you join us? And so I, so I did. And, uh, and that was RASN that we, that we built. We created a category called mechanical design synthesis instead of uh, that part, you know, turn, instead of design optimization and structural analysis and thermal analysis, dynamic analysis had to be done at that time by PhD engineers, but we brought it down so regular design engineers uh, could do it. We automated the whole thing. And, and then we ended up, right when we were ready to go public, that's when parametric technology came in in 95 and bought us. And now even to this day, uh, my oldest son, who's a de design engineer down at NASA, Jet Propulsion Laboratories, He's using the old RASN software, so it lives on. America Online introduces new version 4.0. There has never been a better time to get online. The easiest just got easier. And because right then the internet was taken off, so we were looking at all the internet deals. That's when I grabbed some of the old RASN guys, and we started Ariba. And uh, because there's a company uh, out on the East Coast called Open Market that, uh, that just started this thing, business con to consumer electronic commerce. And we were B2B guys. We said, let's start something, let's do business to business electronic commerce. And, that, and that's how it all began, right at Benchmark. And back then it wasn't uh, intuitive whether you should focus on the buyers or the suppliers. And we said, we believe in the golden rule, the guy with the gold rules. 
So we're going to focus on the buyer and we focused right on purchase requisition and we automated that. And uh, it was an incredible team. And uh, so we built, you know, we built up this uh, product and we were cash flow positive from the second quarter of existence. You know, we grew our revenue 100% quarter over quarter for 12 quarters in a row. We took it public after two and three quarter years. I mean, and now to this day, a trillion dollars of commerce goes through the Ariba network, which is more than Amazon, eBay, and Alibaba combined. To create the B2B e-commerce uh, uh, industry, I mean, and it, it was, I mean, it was wild. It was just wild times.